I don't have those pictures on mine. So, hang on, sorry. Just then. There we go. Yeah, just I've just added them in. I mean, again, it might be a case if you resync, um, or I can resend again, um, just giving it a different name. Uh, I, I, these are just being added on to yesterday's lesson, so I don't know if it's a case whether you need to resync or not. Oh, I know because I've written all over mine, so there's probably reason <laughs> it. It's okay because obviously you got this. I mean, this is you can make your own notes as you go along. I've just um, put some images in there to sort of um, stimulate our discussion this morning as as well. Anyway. And it's all getting recorded. So with the bits that I do here as well, you can just go back and look at the recording. Um, you know, and again add into your own um sort of a OneNote page as well, sort of thing. Okay, so don't sort of uh, stress too much not about uh, having the, the images there. Now, um as you recall yesterday, we, we began looking um at Ozymandias, the poem, and um, we discussed the kind of nature of power within that uh, and what it represents. Um, if we just, I'm just going to sort of leap it forward a little bit to the question which we're looking at later in the que the lesson today, um, and it's about the presentation of ideas about power in Ozymandias. Um, that's what we're going to be looking at really um, this morning, and it's going to build towards how you are eventually um, do a little response to that probably later this week or early next week. So we're looking at the I, how the presentation of ideas about power is contained within this poem. OK, and so I picked out just some of the lines that you, you had had yesterday um, and you'd been using when making a sort of comparison to leaders. Um, and so the first one that we have here um, that I picked up on uh, was the, the two vast and trunkless legs stand in the desert and also a shattered visage lies. Now, if we think about these in relation to ideas about power. Um, Oliver, what do you think? What is that image of the two vast and trunkless legs? What does that suggest about power? Um, I don't really know. Uh, if yeah, you're, yeah, big, do. if you're big, you're powerful. Sorry? If you're large, you're powerful. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. th that, that's the concept behind it, isn't it? Like strength. Um, yeah. So, you know, just sort of developing that point, that idea. Yeah, I mean, it, is, it, it size equates to the power. For the, for the leader who's who's um, arranged to have this big statue created of him and, and his likeness, um, that's that's what he sees it. You know, it's, it's the bigger the statue, the bigger the power. And if we begin to look at sort of certain key words, um, you know, we've got, Vast, Philippa. What does that? What 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 idea is given to us by the, the word vast? Big, massive. Big. Anything else? I mean, is it just big? Massive. Like huge, ginormous. Sorry, say that again, Charlotte. Like huge, ginormous. Like really yeah. big. Yeah. Oops. Huge, ginormous. Heavy as well. Sorry, say that again. Really heavy. Yeah, exactly. Like so the weight that he's got from the power. Yeah, and again, it, it's building on that idea that, that Oliver first said there about you know um, size is how you define somebody's power and, and the power that they wield. Um, so that that vast, yeah. Oops, 
Can't spell. Um, if something is vast, how big is it? Define it. Give me a physical quantity for something being vast. Hugh, what do you think? If something is vast, give me its physical properties. Um, would it be like ongoing? Yeah, it would. Isn't it? Ongoing, yeah. Would it appear to end? No, just keep on going. Yeah, good. You know, it's, it's that idea as far as the eye can see, isn't it? However, Clem, hello. if, hello, good morning to you. Um, if the legs are trunkless, what does that suggest about the power within these legs? Does it mean that even though they have all this power and like opportunity to do stuff, all that stuff will never really move? The law is just kind of... A little bit like that, but I mean, again, where does the power come from in, in your legs? Oh, Charlotte, you do um, PE, don't you? Where's the driving force from your from your legs? Your hips. Is it? Yeah. Do your thighs not do anything? Do your thigh muscles not do anything? No, because it comes from the the joint at your hip. Oh, see that 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 explodes my great analytical theory. Now, thanks, Charlotte. Sorry. <laughs> Because I, I was thinking about you know, but thinking about the 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 the, the, the powerful dr driving force coming down through through the sort of like thigh muscles etc into your legs, but again we can think about it, as Clem was mentioning there as well. Uh, they're basically they're cut off. So that basically makes it that begins to make it powerless. Um, by doing it that way, um, because it's oops, the portion of the leg being missing, um, isn't it? Um, so and, and it, be, it begins powerfully, you know, That's vast. Like source of like balance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and it's all a, a kilter, isn't it? So it appears vast, it appears powerful, but then it comes to this abrupt end. Yeah. What does that suggest about how this leader's power might have ended? If the statue ends abruptly, what else might have ended abruptly? His power. Exactly, yeah, good, his power. Yeah. yeah. Oops. OK, good. And the fact that. Um, oops, this statue is standing in a desert penny. What does that suggest? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, um, can. yeah, thanks. I think it's like he has power, but like no one really supports him because like the desert's empty, maybe. Good. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Desert is empty.
So again, it's that sense of power over nothing, isn't it? it that, that there's there's no audience there. There's nothing. And you know, if we think normally about a, a desert, nothing grows in a desert. Nothing survives in a, uh, in a desert. It's it's this idea of, isn't it, that it's a harsh landscape, um, brutal landscape, and that that's where it it's ended up in this sort of desert of ruins. Good. Um, then we have also over here, we have the shattered visage lies. Now, visage is the face, OK? Uh, just in case anybody was unsure what that is, from the French, uh, visage. Uh, so we've got that, the shattered uh, visage lies. John, what else does this tell us about this um, statue? You know, it, it, the face is kind of, as you can see there, it's kind of it was like, was it like, I don't know, like... A face, oh, it's like also like a face of lies. Like he's just everything he said, everything he like he was like stood for is just lies. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. I like that though. Now you you've obviously focused on that word, I and mean, again, where where you can have that, um, it's a bit of ambiguity in, in the language, which is good there because obviously. Others, myself included there, you know, were thinking of the idea of the face just lying as it lies in the ground. But you've looked at it as well from that, that, that point of view of not telling the truth, um, uh, speaking a lie. Um, so we've, we've, we've got there. And again, that, that's really good. Even in this, even in, at that moment, the statue is lying. Yeah, very good, John. Oops. Oops. And again, you know, that, that, that works in well with what we're looking at yesterday, because also we're making those links uh, between this poem and saying how we think it could be a sort of fitting poem for, for Trump uh, as his presidency comes to an end there. And it's that idea, isn't it, even when they're on, they're on the decline, the great dictator will still be lying through their teeth. And again, it's even though we've got this crumbling wreck of, of, of the face, you know, what that dictator stood for, he's still lying about what it is, what he stood for, what he was, how great he was, all those sorts of things. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Um, anybody else want to add anything into that one about the shattered visage lies? Anybody, anything else we can take out of that? Is, the, is that head doing anything? It's watching. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, again, you get, the, you get the one eye, it's kind of, you know, it's myopic, yeah, it's just looking out there. But again, is it active or passive? It's passive, but you could also see it as the way, like, powerful people get other people to do their dirty work for them. So that's oh, cool. good idea, yeah. And again, maybe, yeah, as well as how he saw the world. You know, it's that sort of myopic look. It's only one way of looking at the world. Very good. I like that. Excellent. So move down to this second little image, little image here. And uh, my name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Um, who am I not? I think everybody's kind of spoken so far, haven't they? Do -do -do -do, they have. I've got to come back to you, Oliver, then. Um, my name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. How is that line, do you think, meant to be received? What, is, what do you think is the speaker intending? about power here um he's saying well he's saying that he thinks he's like the most powerful of any leader ever yeah. and he expects everyone to just believe it yeah yeah good 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 and the fact that he's not what techniques being used there oliver 
Um, so he thinks he's one thing and he's clearly not. You know, he's not powerful. Uh, I don't know. Um, anybody help here? It begins with an I. Oh, irony. Yes, it is. Well done. You knew it all along, Oliver. See? Yeah, it's that deliberate use of irony here, isn't it? You know, you look at that and you think about that. You have that in your in your sort of mind's eye. You know, my name is always my name, King of Kings. You know, <clears throat> yeah, well, look at you. If that is the King of Kings, what does that say for the rest? You know, it is decrepit. It is destroyed. All those things. Yeah. Good, 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 good. And here as well, we have this image of the colossal wreck, yeah? Um, what does the word colossal suggest, Hugh? Pardon, sorry, uh, the word colossal. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, what does the word colossal suggest? Oh, um, like, ancient? Yeah, I mean, again, if we think back to, to size, if something is colossal, how big is it? Oh, very big. Yeah, so here we have this. So if we have this sort of huge wreck of the statue, which sort of kind of stands for, is synonymous with this leader, what do you think the poet might be saying here about power? What does power ultimately do? Crumble. Yeah, good. What else could be getting suggested here? You know, it, it's the fact that power crumbles, no matter how powerful somebody might seem, no matter how you know intense the power they have. What else could be getting suggested here when we have this dilapidated statue? What's happened to the person who's wielded this power? What's happened to them? Um, did they die? Yeah, they they most they, they most certainly have died. And we could you you could see if, if the statue kind of symbolizes them. Yeah, if we think of the. Oop. Could you say it's like they're making way for a new? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, there's going to be somebody always coming up um, behind them, isn't it? It's that idea, too. Um, can we maybe think as well about. And again, if we think over uh, of, of our. Um, text as well you know think back to Macbeth you know Macbeth could quite easily fall into the kind of Ozymandias type of character here King of Kings couldn't he um you know and if we think of this statue you know at one point it was kind of perfection and it, it, it symbolized who they were what they stood for how vast the power how colossal the power was all that sort of stuff if it's destroyed then it kind of suggests as well possibly that that power has in turn destroyed them. And again, I see if we think about Macbeth and that sort of, you know, his search for power, his desire for power, um, yeah, it's one of the things that destroys him from within, and um, that sort of idea. Um, okay. Good, good, good. And then we have the image. Look on my works. Charlotte, Using that image there, what do you see when you look on this great dictator's works, when you look at that image? There's not a lot to look at. Nothing to look at, yeah, there's nothing to see here. Good. Um, John, what do you see? Not a lot. 
Again, not a lot. Anybody want to build on not a lot? <laughs> uh, could symbolise the work that he's done. So he's valid and unthin. And if not, he's done more damage than he has good. Good. Ah, yeah. Because if this statue is ended up in a desert, presumably that statue would have been where to begin with. Outside his castle? Well, yeah, I mean, outside castle. So, I mean... Has somebody dragged that statue into the into the, his his kingdom, whatever? Or do you think is the desert what was once his kingdom? It must be because of it's so big, you won't be able yeah. to drag that. Yeah, and that ties into the point you made, um, Charlotte, about more damage being done than good. So he's, you know, the, where he's ruled over. This is what it's led to complete and utter destruction. Yeah, oops. Um, and we can think about, you know. Clearly, you know, that, that this power it has amounted to nothing. Yeah. yeah. Did you say that he like drove his supporters in his kingdom way down? Oh, it's all of that too. And you, again, you see little bits uh, of that. Whoops, we just go down into the poem it, it itself, you know. Um, it's about how he treated those, uh, uh, the, the people, you know, it says, near a minute, um, the wrinkled lip, the sneer of cold command, tell that it's sculptor, well, those passions read. Uh, the hand that mocked him and the heart, the, ha the heart that fed. You know, it's that idea of it. Almost, it's, isn't it? In the end, how he's treated his subjects is how he himself kind of ends up. You know, he's treated them with contempt. And so contempt is basically his epitaph. Yeah, um, and again, if we look down to the sort of the final two 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 lines um, of the sonnet, yeah. So it's boundless and bare, the lone and level sands that stretch far away. Again, that could so easily be the epitaph for his for his kingdom, for his reign of power. Yeah, um, you know, the fact that, you know, it's boundless and bare, you know, it's just vast emptiness, isn't it? Um, nothingness. OK, so really sort of powerful, powerful images contained throughout this poem. And um, so we want to move on and just begin to look at. Now, I don't want you to think about comparing it with any other poem at the moment. I just want us to focus on this one and how ideas about power are presented in, in this poem, okay? I'm gonna give you what is just coming up to 10 past 10 now. So what I'd like you to do now, um, just down the side here, I'm gonna give you sort of what? Eight, 10 minutes um, sort of thing to gather your thoughts uh, and then just jot down with everything that we've discussed so far over the past couple of days, I want you to put down your your thoughts about what ideas about power are being expressed through this poem by Shelley, the poet here. And um, just bullet point them, okay? Oops. So, for example, um,
you know, it might be you think, right, as we've been discussing there, just to sort of kick you off, you know, this idea about power amounts to nothing. A um, lot more um, ideas can be teased out of this uh, uh, sonnet in 40 lines. Think about sonnet as well. Remember what sonnets are usually used for. And again, so what that could be expressing uh, uh, through that sort of a genre. OK, so I want you to pop down your ideas about how the, the, the poet is presenting ideas about power in this poem. And I said, I'll give you 10, just I'll give you to um, 20 past 10. OK, you all right with that? Yeah. 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 Thank you for speaking for the group there. OK, so off you go. Can you please repeat the question? Can you please repeat the question? Yeah, what you're what you're popping down is because you, you've been asked in, in the uh, uh, poem or uh, an exam question how the poet presents ideas about power. Okay, ah. so I want you just to bullet point down is what ideas about power do you see in that poem? Think about all the things we've discussed over the last two lessons. Okay, thanks. Okay.
OK, how are we doing? We all got an idea about uh, power being presented in this poem here. Clem, can you give me one of your ideas, please, that you've, you've jotted down? You said we had until 20 past. Yeah, no, I thought, you know, I'm, what am I, I'm on 10, 18. Yeah, OK, I'll give you I'll give you your next two minutes. <laughs> Aha, we are at, we're at 20 past now. OK, whoops. Um, so. Again, come back to you, sir. Clem. Clem, what did you have as one of your ideas about power in this poem? Oliver, can you give us an idea of uh, power in the poem, please? Um, oh, good. Ah, oh, good. <laughs> I put. Oh, I thought it made the like whole point of the poem more dramatic because of the fact they used a sonnet, which is usually like a like confession of love. <laughs> ah, no, yeah, no. So yes, so sonnets. Oops, hang on, I'll get right car here. Now you're you're quite right. Sonnets. Um so if we think about the concept, you're quite right. You know, if we think about it, sonnets are regarded as a love poem. So what does it say that the, the poet might be saying about Ozymandias and power? That he really likes power and loves himself yeah. and yeah it, it's that idea it, it's it's the love so the love of power yeah yeah um and, and you can have that and, and again we think back to our, our macbeth he loved having power you know think back to that sort of thing um any sort of big sort of you know dictator think about how much they they take power to themselves and they love wielding it and that's what drives them so yeah that that's spot on well done good oliver um, Hugh, what have you got as an idea about power in the poem? 
Um, it's like power of size, but not like physical power. Ah, right, yeah. So power of physical. You can't really do anything. Yeah, yeah. Good. Thank you. John, what about you? Well, in the poem, it's like the power's been centralised, like a dictatorship. Ah, good, good, yeah. Oh. It's like, all because all dictatorships always end, like, quite abruptly. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah, very good. Charlotte? Um, the, the bigger you are in size or more influential you are, the more power you can bear. Ooh. Oh, and I got a good one there. Um, I was going to say before, but we didn't. About the shattered. Um, yeah, hang, hang on a minute. I just want to get your influential down sort of thing and, and take that through. And then we'll come back to the second one, yeah? Okay. And if you think about it, you, you, quite right what you say there, Charlotte, about, you know, normally we think of the more influence you have, the more power you have. But in, the, in this poem as well, that's kind of got stood in its head in the end, isn't it? Because he has no power and he has no influence by the end. Um, but, you know, that's a valid point. So what was the other one you wanted to say about Shattered? Because um, that's obviously not him physically. That could represent like him inside, like he is broken inside, but the power ah, Very good, yes. Yeah, and again, that's you again thinking about this symbolically here. That, that, that's it, spot on, really good. Um, Penny, anything you want to add? I have like a quote, but okay, give us that. I don't know. I but um for this part, I'd probably just say like kind of hints at how like physical things can outlast like his power. Oh right, yeah. Like the statue, maybe. Yeah. Even though it's crumbling and broken down, yeah, that that outlasts his actual power, yeah, and 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 it's the brokenness again, going back to what Charlotte's saying, you know, that, that shattered, you know, of of himself, and in and, and in the statues now, that's what kind of represents his power and what it was. Very good, yeah. Um, Clem. Hello. 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 Sorry, for some reason it just wasn't. Letting me speak. That's yeah. that's all right. Don't worry. I mean, I think we're all getting back used to this again, and things don't go normal. So don't stress about it. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Anything you want to add to the power concepts? Um, it's like you shouldn't take the power you have for granted. Oh yeah. Very good, yeah, like that. Excellent, Philippa. Um, power of art. Power, sorry, is art. Oh, oh, yeah. I, if you think about that, 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 that's good. What made you think of that, Philippa? Hello, Philippa. Oh, dropped. Now, I, I can't remember, I'm sure we've had this saying before, um, and it might well have been with Macbeth. Um, another thing we can think about here, it's a well-known quote, is power corrupts. An absolute power. Corrupts. Can we finish off the quote, please? Too slow. <laughs> uh, it's power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Uh, and again, that, that's a kind of testimony uh, within this poem, I think, as well, uh, that we've got there. 
some really good ideas that we've got contained in there. Um, I'm beginning to think about the poem here clearly symbolically as we're doing that. Now, um, the last little bit we've got to think about in this poem because it asks you how does the poet present ideas about poetry. So we've got our ideas here up above. We know the, set, the things that are being said in this poem about power and a few more, but we've got to think, how does the poet get that across? Well, you've already began to point to that. Um, it has been through through symbolism um, that you've had here, that you've recognised that, the, you know, the statue stands for so much more. Um, it's not just a, it's not just a statue. It represents Ozymandias. It represents his power. All those sorts of things. Um, we've talked about it today already. It's the use of imagery. You know that vast desert. Oops. The void, emptiness. Um, oops. Uh, that is on the landscape. It's the use of narrative voices that we've talked about as well, uh, that he has within this poem, giving a voice to all, you know, to, to Ozymandias himself, to somebody who we presume to have been uh, within his kingdom, and then, you know, somebody who is a who is a, a traveller into that land themselves, somebody who, who, who doesn't belong there. And it's their kind of overview that we have of that as well. Um, and clearly also, it's going to be the language uh, that, 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 Sh that Shelley uses. And we'll look at the language in a little bit of detail tomorrow, just to wrap it up. You know, we've got um, the idea about hand that mocks and, um, stamped in these lifeless things you know it, it's some of it is the kind of the violence and the destructiveness of the language that we've seen throughout this poem as well uh, and we'll touch upon that I say tomorrow and that'll probably take us only a, a sort of couple of uh, about five tenish minutes to get that and that one be done and then just so that you know ahead um the next one we're going to look at i think they may have looked at this one last year i'm not sure um we're going to look at my last duchess, um, another dramatic monologue, as you can see. Um, what I will do, I'm going to put this uh, YouTube clip into our um, English department channel as well. And I'll ask you just to watch that overnight before tomorrow's lesson. It's only about three minutes long. I'll, I'll, I'll put it into our team's notes sort of thing, so you know. Uh, I just want you to listen to it so you've got a bit of uh, prior knowledge ahead of that tomorrow. Okay. Does that sound okay to everybody? Yes. Thank you, Clem, yeah. for responding there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and so that brings us to the end of this morning's lesson. How's your morning been so far? Good, thank you. That's good, good, good. Are you getting back into the swing of things, you know, or is it still a bit of a shock to the system? Good. Yeah, I'm just tired, really. <laughs> How are people's sleeping patterns? Are they still out of wonk? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Do you think they'll ever return to normal? Oh, yeah. Oh. It just hit me like a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, dear. Right, well, uh, those of you in my form group, as you know, we're meeting up at uh, afternoon tutor time this afternoon. So if, if we, I say if we meet, um, let's say, around about sort of 22 to 2, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Do we still yeah. have the morning ones? Um, okay. No. At the okay, moment, we're not, at the moment, we don't have the morning ones. We probably, probably thought, you know, sh give, give you those few vital extra minutes before you have to get to lesson one. Um, so the one that we have, e we'll have each week is that sort of Tuesday one. That's kind of one that's sort of set in stone, so we always sort of touch base. But then if anybody wants to have a chat... You're on um, the other days. Sorry? We can. Rosie, stop. Do we don't have to do it on other days. Uh, at the moment, no, that we don't need to meet as a group together uh, on other days apart from the Tuesday um, afternoon. It's that one point in the week. But I was about to say, if if you want to if you want to meet up, 
you know, we can arrange that. And I'm talking to my form, obviously, now. If, if you want it to be maybe twice a week sort of thing, that's fine. Or if you want to have a chat with me on your own sort of thing about something that might be bothering you or to discuss something, again, we can use that tutor time. Just let me know and I'll set it up as a kind of one-to-one -one, one sort of thing. Or if two or three of you want to have a chat with me about something, that's fine. Just use it as you, as you wish. But it's the fact that we all get together once a week. I think that's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ooh, it's break time. Time for a drink and some biscuits or, what, or your snack of choice. <laughs> Do you know what's been really good for me this time, though? Not hearing Will Stone eating his crisps. I have to say that, or his biscuits, whichever it was that he used to always bring. You know, that, that has been a bit of an improvement for me. You've been very good in the food front so far. Thank you. If you are eating, it's all silently done. That is good news. Okay, so off to break before your, your next sessions begin. And I will either see you, if you're in my form, at afternoon form time today. And the rest of you will all be back together for lesson tomorrow. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.